don't want to take up too much of your time. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're live here with the man who I was actually chatting with recently in Boise. Um, at Steve Larson's mastermind. There was tons of cool people there. Um, but I have Sean on because I want to talk specifically. Um, I didn't know a lot of this till we were chatting back and forth, how many businesses you've helped grow into seven figures and beyond, which is pretty impressive. And I'm sure you've learned a lot that we could talk about here, but you've been, you said, I think you said for the past 16 years, you've been like a sales professional, um, which has obviously helped you a lot with all those businesses. Um, but for people who don't know who you are, um, in your own words, can you kind of explain what you do right now and why you're awesome? <laughs> sure. Well, thank you. First of all, um, Daxi, so much for having having me on your show. I I'm super, super uh, grateful and and just pumped to be here, man. Because you are the man when it comes to this. You know, like everybody I talk to, all of my mentors or some of your mentors, you know, Russell and Steven and all these other guys that we know, um, they just say you're the guy. So, like, I'm grateful to be Russell. Here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so, okay. Who, who am I? Right. So, uh, I came out of, I'll just, I'll just start with a quick story cause it's probably the easiest, uh, for me to share it. Um, I came out of college and I asked my dad, I said, dad, how do I make a lot of money? Like that was the question. Right. And he said, look, you could do one of three things, Sean. He said, are you a CEO? I was like, well, I'm 21, not really a CEO. He goes, okay, so you're not a CEO. So then that's out. How about, um, are you some sort of an entertainer or a dancer or a musician or something like that? I'm like, no, I'm not a comedian. None of that stuff. Like not my jam, not a professional athlete. And he goes, well, you better go learn how to sell. I was like, okay. So I, I left college and I had this planted in my head and all of a sudden my dad was like, or, you know, he tells me this. And so I start looking around and I, I said, you know what, if I'm going to go sell some stuff, I got to learn from the best. So I found this group of people that sold commodities like aluminum and sheet metal and electronics and plastic and like stuff everybody needs and nobody cares about. And I started getting into that world and just hustling with my activity, activity, but I was failing. Like I constantly failed. I never made any sales. I didn't know what I was doing. And it came to this breaking point one day when my boss, Tim came in, he said, Sean, you're going to be kicked out of this business and fired if you don't produce results. And I said, okay, Tim, like, how do I change this? And he said, you better go read a book or go to a seminar or do something. So that's when like really everything changed for me because he's like, go learn. And so then I went off in this world and I started going to the, I read all these books starting with like the Xerox copy plans. And I went into Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie's, um, you name it, I've done it, right? Tom Hopkins all the way through um, all these different sales methodologies. And what I learned in this process, like how important sales really is. And that was really the key for me um, for, for a lot of the explosive growth that, that I've, I've, I've been a part of um, my whole, my whole journey. And so, so to sum it up very quickly, um, I, I would go read a book and I pull this one piece and I put it in my sales process, or I would go to a seminar and I pull this piece and I put it into my sales process. And then I had this like duct tape together, like style of, of uh, selling. And every time I would get into a sales call, like one reason or another, sometimes it worked, but the majority of the time it just failed. And um, at the time I was in an electronics business, luckily I'd made some money because that, that technique had helped me and it got me into a place where I could invest and in, in get started running my own business because I'm a serial entrepreneur, guilty. Um, and so we ended up investing into, or I personally invested into an electronics manufacturing company. And um, I was, same thing, I was, I was doing a little bit of selling, but I was still failing on a major scale because I you know, like, should have been growing. And, and at the time we we're doing like 400K in revenue. And I was on a trip. I went out to visit a company that built these uh, like packs for the military, like the battery supplies. My electronics company would build the circuit boards that would power the battery packs on the on the vest. And I ran in the airport. I was at the airport and I ran into a guy who was in the world selling the same stuff that I was doing. But he had like a hundred times the results. And I walked up to him and I said, Chuck, his name was Chuck Pokanowski. And I said, Chuck, how are you doing this? And he started asking me questions about my sales process. And all of a sudden it came down to this. He said, do you qualify people? I was like, yeah, you know, like I get into a conversation, I try to qualify them, I blabber all of my stuff that I do, then I overcome their objections and try to close. And that was my process. And he goes, well, that works very, not as much as it should, right? And he said, instead of qualifying, learn to disqualify prospects. Come into the um, conversation thinking that this is a perfect person and it's my job to ask them questions that, well, they would disqualify themselves out of being a client. 
and that just flicked the light bulb on. I started doing research. I found all these different sales methodologies and I got married. I married myself to a couple of them and then I built a methodology that works super well. From there, I took that methodology and I put it into my business and four years later, we went from 400,000 to 8 million in revenue. And then I was like, okay, we sold that business, moved into, um, at that stage, we moved into the online game and um, I wanted to learn internet marketing because I understood that sales and marketing are totally separate. And um, so I started going down this path of learning the marketing side of things. I found this organization, loved them, teaches really good stuff, went and I spoke with the owners of it and they said, I, cause they're doing about 2 million a year. I was like, why aren't you doing more? And he said, well, the, you know, his name was Keala. And, and I said, Hey Keala. And he said, well, cause our sales, you know, like can't really, the bandwidth's not there. So like, okay, well, I think I can help if you're interested. I'd love to come and work with you guys just to learn the internet marketing and exchange. I'll help you with the sales side. Um, because it's, it's like the front part, they got it nailed, but the selling stuff they didn't. So I built a sales structure with one of my business partners and we scaled that business from 2 million to 17 million in less than 12 months, which is insane. And then we thought, well, we're doing it for them. Why don't we go do it for ourselves? And then that started into the world of where I'm at kind of now. Um, we started as affiliate marketers, right? Because that's the part that we learned and we crushed it um, because we knew the sales part of it and we were just still learning the marketing. Like we had it good enough, but we could close the deals on the back end and we were selling high ticket stuff. We ended up selling um, just shy of, uh, or just over $7 million in like two years worth of like water uh, systems for your, for your home. And at that stage then it was, let's go build a software platform. And so we did that and then that's what this award came from. It was uh, it was a million in less, just over 10 months. And so we actually have a software platform that teaches people marketing on the front end. And then we actually built out an entire call, uh, like sales system where people can go through our coaching program and they come out the other end just crushing it. So that's where we, that's kind of where we got to. Yeah, so there's a lot we could dive into. <laughs> you just gave me a full buffet, dude, of, <laughs> of <laughs> options. Like, what am I gonna choose here? Um, I, I wanna kind of talk, uh, just touch on you. You mentioned uh, disqualifying. Like, what is the effect, like, what was that effect that it started having when you started introducing that? And like, can you kind of explain that? Yeah, so what I found was, and again, in the, and that's a great question, by the way. So, so how do you disqualify somebody? Well, people can't buy from you um, unless they have a compelling reason to do so, right? That's the first thing. Um, we call it, in, in my world, it's called finding pain or finding the problem points that people have. And there's a series of questioning strategies that I've developed over the years that really work very, very well. And I actually probably could give those to you at some stage. So, um, and and so, so the I'll just kind of go over the framework first. So, um, there's, there's a magical series of questions that'll pull out the first part, which is the compelling reason for somebody to want to do business with you. And then after that, you have to dive in and see if they've got budget to afford your services. And the last piece, one of the most important is you got to understand how they make decisions. And so each step of the methodology that we've created, um, for this is really walking somebody through because sales is a trained thing. I used to be an introvert. And then what, you know, like selling was something where I could be an introvert, but I could still be really effective because it applies to all different personality types that are out there. So, so finding the pain, getting the budget, understanding the decision process will cut through all the fluff in any sales conversation. And then now you've got what you need in order to put a, put a, um, you know, an opportunity together. It makes sense. Does that make sense? Does that yeah, that makes, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, I like that. How do you kind of like, without asking, like determine the budget, do you just figure out other aspects of their business and what they're doing currently? And yeah, we always start, you know, people buy emotionally and they justify logically 100% of the time. That's how it works every single time, right? So if we're going to go get somebody invested emotionally, what do we got to do? We got to take them towards pleasure or we got to pull them away from pain. So in your world, you sell podcasting and some other things, right? Like uh, podcasting is one of the main things that you sell. So um, maybe the question is, when you start the meeting, right, it would be, hey, my name is Daxi. Uh, I'm a podcast specialist and I kick a lot of ass on the side. Uh, and I have a lot of clients that come to me when they struggle about things like, oh, they don't know what software to use or they don't even know where to get started or, or maybe they're pissed off because they've heard their other friend and seen their business just explode and they're like, well, how do I do it? So what goes on in your world? 
And that would be like the opening line to get that person into this like compelling pain part of like, ah, oh, like I really want the result, but I don't know how to do it. And then we be quiet as the sales professional and we just start asking questions, right? Yeah. In, in an hour's worth of a conversation, the true sales professional should talk 17 minutes or less. Yeah. Right? And it's like, the less you talk, sometimes the better I find, um, which I found. What, um, so kind of going to like what I titled this, this, this live talking about persuasion. Yeah. Um, can we talk about that? Cause you, you said, um, there's like five, five. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, okay. just to answer your, answer your budget question. Not, Cause I, I yeah. you asked that, right. So, so once you get them into that compelling pain, um, position, right? The objective is to find three of them. You got to poke and prod and itch and pull out three different really valid pain points that you know you can solve. Once you've got those three, you'll have that prospect in a position where they're like, yes, I like, I definitely need your help because you've described the problem. Recently reading a great book called Niche Down, if you haven't read it, um, it talks yeah, about- Dude, I actually am going to interview that author. Oh, uh, dude. Guys, listening to this podcast right now, do not miss that interview because that will change your life 100%. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm like waiting to finish the book before I get him on and I told him. He's super accessible, by the way, on Instagram. He'll read his DMs. Oh. Um, he has like a thousand followers, I think, something low. Um, it's weird. All the smart guys who are like behind the scenes writing good books, like they're super accessible. Like people, um, but yeah. uh, he, talks about, yeah, he talks about describing the problem, right? So the person that can describe the problem the best when you're listening to someone describe a problem, like, oh, they get me, they understand me. Why? Because that's how it works. So when you can describe the problem that you solve better than anybody else in the most simple form, but not too simple, like Einstein says, then you win because they instantly think like you have the answer. Anyways, when you- Yeah, there's actually a quote from Einstein in that book. I, I was just reading it. He says like, if I had an hour to, to solve something, I would spend 55 minutes thinking of the problem and then five um, minutes thinking of the solution. I was like, totally. whoa, this is coming from a really smart guy, you know? That's it, man, for sure. So going back to it, the budget question is like, you've, you've identified the reasons, compelling reasons why they want to do business with you. And you said, well, I'm, man, like, I got to ask, like, you probably don't have a budget set aside for this, do you? And all of a sudden you've asked a great question. They remember all the problems that they have. Well, no, I don't. Okay, no problem. Well, typically when I work with clients, um, they may have, you know, like usually they come to me and they have anywhere between like 5,000 and 10,000 a month or whatever the number is, right? Is that something you could fit into your budget? And then they're going to say yes or no. And if they say no, then maybe it's time to disqualify them depending on what the price of your, pro your program is. And, and then if they say yes, then I always pull back even further. It's called stripping line as a professional sales technique. It's where it's like, oh, okay, well, uh, man, like, I assume you're probably closer to the five than the 10, right? Now all of a sudden you've bracketed them five to 10 and you've gone as the sales pro to the lower number where people would mostly think you'd go to the higher number and be like, oh, well actually I had about 7,500. Okay, cool. Well, what if we can solve all those problems for like 6,500? Is that a good, good idea? Yes, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Now they're still qualified. Then you go into the last part, which is getting the decision process. That's how you do the budget thing. Does that help? No, I love that. Yeah. You get them to like justify it in their head. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So you want to talk about persuasion? One, one sec. Carrie asks, who is the author? Uh, Christopher, uh, you have it? Yeah. Lockheed. It. It is right Christopher there. Lo yeah. You could search niche down in Amazon. Uh, it's really a good book. Like this is like essential. Yeah. Um, I Great think, book. cause I was thinking about it this weekend too. Like, you know, if you're going to start an online business that starts with you, the first thing you got to really understand is you <laughs> like before you understand the people in the market, like you gotta understand who are you, why are you different, why are you unique? And I think this book is really good at highlighting that. Um, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Cool. I, I love that. I mean, like that book's great. Like I've actually already read it twice since I've gotten, I got it at Offer Lab. That's where we found it. You know, Steve Larson gave it to us. Super grateful for that guy. So smart when it comes to marketing, one of the best in the world. Um, absolutely. Um, but there's a guy named Blair Warren. Uh, he wrote a book called The One Sentence Persuasion. Have you read it, Daxi? No, but I'm checking on Amazon right now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I don't even think you have to go to Amazon. Just go into Google and type up uh, one sentence persuasion. Uh, you, there's a PDF there. It's a 13 page document. Super, super simple. Um, that one document, 13 pages, I suggest anybody that's in the world of podcasting specifically learn this strategy, right? Here's the sentence. Just so you guys get it. I'll say it twice. People will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, 
justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. Let me say it again. People will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and throw rocks at their enemies. Now, how does this apply in your world of podcasting? Well, guess what? Daxi, you always have a topic that you talk about in a podcast, correct? Right. And during that conversation that you're talking about, in your conversation, if you can do all five of those things, maybe you don't even have to do five. If you can get three of those things dialed in, like you encourage their dreams, like, hey, you want to be a podcast king? Like, this is the way to do it, right? You're encouraging their dreams. You're showing them a path. Right. So um, once you have that dialed in, you've gotten one of those things. Right. How do you justify their failures? There's lots of people that teach podcasting. Some of them don't really do it. Some of them actually, um, you know, like fail at it because maybe they use the wrong software or doing something else. Right. Like now you're justifying their failures. How do you allay their fears or put their fears to rest? Like, check it out. A lot of people do fail. That's probably because they don't do as much of the research as they need to, or they don't reach out to the right mentor like Daxi to help them, right? Again, now I'm putting their fears to rest, confirming their suspicions. Again, like I said, lots of people fail. I'm confirming that yeah. people fail in the world and then throwing rocks at the enemies. Most yeah. people- ha- Hashtag them. not sponsored, guys. Uh, <laughs> that, that's, Mar- that's Marie Larson, by the way. Uh, yeah. Can't see her face. She's the bomb. Uh, I, love, link. I love Marie Larson. There it is. Marie Larson, a new last name now, Dorius. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Um, Absolutely. share the link. I don't know what link you're talking about. Uh, is it Blair Warren? Um, um I have a, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. True. It's cool. If you just Google Blair Warren, one sen- sentence persuasion, you'll see it. Yeah, but yeah. actually, so is what that's happening there with those five questions? Cause I feel, I find a big thing in, in sales or even just relationships is mirroring. Like, you know, kind of like, you know, getting to their level, speaking their language and like kind of like acting like them. Is that what you're doing there pretty much? You're just mirroring their life and they're like, they feel like they can relate to you. So, okay. So, oh God, it's such a perfect transition. So number one, those five things are just core pillars that you have to have in every conversation of every topic that you're talking about, whether it be whatever kind of content that you're putting out there, put all five of those in each piece of content, right? Rachel Peterson talks about, her new viral framework, which is insane for content, um, she actually uses a modified version of this as she teaches how to do content. And so she'll have one topic, and then in that topic, she'll do seven days instead of just five. You could t- choose a topic like podcasting, and on Monday, you talk about encouraging people's dreams about podcasting. That's all you talk about, whatever topic it is. On Tuesday, then you go to the next one, right? Which is again, gonna be justifying their failures. Same topic you talked about yesterday, but now you just talk about justifying their failures. Day three is now putting their fears to rest about the topic. Day four would be confirming their suspicions. Day five would be throwing rocks at their enemies. So that now becomes a roadmap of content that you can actually throw out there and use for one topic. So as people sometimes struggle to find topics to talk about in podcasts or content, this is a way to extend the life of a single topic. That makes sense. No, I love that. Yeah, that I, that's genius. Yeah. yeah. So where yeah. where did you? Okay, cool. There's cool. a lot more to that. I would I would encourage you to uh, reach out to Rachel Peterson and interview her on your podcast because her viral framework is just it's it's top notch for sure. Gotcha. Um. Anyways, you were talking about um mirror matching. Yes. Mirror so, matching. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so one of the things I studied and I used to teach sales training, there's a brief part of my career where I actually would teach uh, sales professionals to close seven figure deals. Cause that's what I did. Right. Um, I closed seven figure deals. I figured I could teach other people to do it. And um, so, so the, one of the first things Tom Hopkins says it best. Um, if you want to break down people's filters, there's four filters that any one person has, right? So you can be a dominant style filter you can be an influencing type filter, you can be a steady relator, or you can be a conscientious thinker, right? They call it DISC. I used to teach extended DISC. And within the DISC model, here's the pro- Is that the same as a personality DISC, by the way? Or? Yeah, personality DISC profiling. Like, yeah. uh, so, so if you want the brief history, there was a guy named Carl Jung back in the 1920s, super smart psychologist. Um, he, was, he was a loner, he was a super introverted person. And he basically would play alone at recess. 
and all the kids would make fun of him. And um, he grew up with this like complex, like all these kids hate me because I'm a loner. And he fell into the world of psychology. He had four kids. Two of his kids followed in his footsteps with being kind of the loner at, at the school recess, whereas other two flourished in sports. And he was like, what the heck is the difference? And so he went into this field of psychology and he split it. He said, look, I'm introducing the term introvert and extrovert. There's two buckets that he created, right? And then there's another psychologist who fell in love with the introvert extrovert named um, William Marston. And he started using this in his psychology experience that he was doing with his clients. And he said, the two buckets aren't enough. So he went out into the Amazon um, jungle and he, he observed these tribes of introverts and extrovert people in tribes. And what he found was some of the people in each of these buckets would either be task driven or they'd be relationship or people driven. And so that created the four buckets that we know as DISC, right? So if you're a task driven person and you're very extroverted, you're going to be a dominant style person, right? If you're relationship, but still very, very, um, um, extroverted so a relationship person and extroverted like marie larson then you're what you call an influencer like you right those are the influencers those are the who people if you're um people driven but you're very introverted you're usually going to be a steady relator think office admins hr people um and then of course the last one's going to be your bucket of engineers who's super task driven and super introverted so that's how I identify like Dude, so this makes so much sense now that I, now that I'm thinking about some people I work with and their profiles. I'm like, God, yep. I never thought about it like this. Well. And so, yeah, so and, that, and that's really the way to do it. So you can listen to in speech patterns. You're an auditory guy. You love podcasting. There's four words that correlate with each of the personalities. So if you're a high D or a dominant style person, your word is what? What does that sound like in a conversation? It sounds like What's in it for me? What's the result? What's the bottom line? What are we going to get to at the end of the get end of the day? That's a dominant person. So if you're hearing that speech pattern, your job as a sales pro is to mirror or match that personality. Be direct to the point. Talk about results all the time, right? Um, if you're an influencing person, you're the who person. You always drop names. You talk about who's going to be at the party, right? Like those are the influencing people. So if you hear people dream, dream name dropping all the time. Good indicator, they're probably that personality style, so you know how you need to react to speak with them, right? Same thing with the, the steady relator. They're the how people. They wanna make sure it works for everybody. They wanna make sure that how it's going to happen is a win-win for the whole party, right? And then lastly is your conscientious or your engineering type, the Cs. Um, those guys are gonna be your why people. Why does it work that way? I wanna know data, details, and, and break it down in that fashion. So um, when you can kind of identify that at first, you know somebody's personality style, Here's the key, I'm gonna break it down in one sentence, super simple. When you first start talking to somebody, listen to the speed that they talk and the volume level that they talk and try to identify that what, who, why, or how that they're using in their speech and then just mirror and match the speed and the tone and the level they speak for the first 90 seconds of your interaction and they will immediately psychologically believe that you speak in their filter and there will be no issue. You can go back to your normal personality style after that. That is a, uh, that's amazing, dude. I did not know you were gonna die. I did not know you knew, you knew all that. I guess I assumed, but your 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 background in sales makes sense now. Um, I'm a solid S. Who is that? Who's a solid S? S Peter Zion. S's are amazing. Like what they say about S is. Um, if you have the ability to be an S and you care deeply about people and just making sure that it's a big win for everybody where you're relationship driven and you're a little bit introverted, those people, when they get, you know, when they get the guts or the gusto, they are the ones that can actually morph themselves better than any other style into any other personality. So again, just remember the first 90 seconds that you have when you're speaking with somebody, like that's critical. Whatever, however they fast they talk, if they're bubbly, if they're bouncing around, you gotta be bubbly and bounce around. That might be a stretch for an S, but when you do it for 90 seconds, they're gonna be like, I love this guy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, Jay Cray said, love this. And he, I know you have a podcast, Jay, so I'm sure that applies for interviewing too. Oh, right? I don't do. Yes. Sean Malone is the man. Yeah. Bang. Getting some love here. Dude, um, so disc task, is that 
what do you take? Is that like a free test? I forget. Yeah, I would just go to, you know, like the best resource, one of the, you know, Tony Robbins put a lot of money and time and energy into building one that's really, really super powerful. Um, you can go pay for, I would just um, Google a Tony Robbins disc test and you can take one right there on the spot and it'll give you um, your natural stop here. Maybe I can find, let me, let me see if I can pull that up. I'll even screen share it with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, guys, if you're on, give me a hashtag live just so this, this boost does, but thanks for the comments. And, um, Peter, if you guys have any, if you guys have any questions right here for Sean, while we have them, drop them yeah. below. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you won't get any alone time with with Sean anytime soon. So <laughs> you never know. I'm, you uh, never know. Uh, yeah. Are you for sale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always down to talk. All right, let me see if I can share the screen here. All right, share screen. Let's see if it pops up. Um, there it is. Cool. All right, so this is like my, the Tony Robbins. This is what comes out at the end, right? It's a 14. Can you see my screen, Daxi? Yeah, I just added it. Okay, cool. So yeah, so it's um, basically, it's it's just a very, I just want to show you this right here, because this gives you really everything that you're going to need to know. This first page is really important. Going through the rest of the pages is super powerful, but you can see here, my natural style, how I am when I'm sitting at home on the couch, I'm what they call a very high I. I'm a people person, right? Now, this never used to be this way. I actually used to be a very high C person, but over the years, 16 years of sales training forced me to change my natural style and people's styles change all the time. I like to play here because most other salespeople are typically an I or an S style of person. Um, and that's why I play here naturally. But then when other people look at me because of my role, CEO, serial entrepreneur, business owner, like those are gonna be your Ds or your dominance, your uh, decision making. And so that's why, like if you look at my chart here, I'm very, very high I and high D in an adapted style. But since I've been doing it for so long, I can flex my muscles into any one of those compartments and, and, and I can have a conversation at a very core and deep level uh, with anybody at any time. So adaptive means like when you're being watched or when you're working with other people? Or, how, other then, people how other people view you, yes. Oh, how other people view you mm -hmm. or how you want them to view you. Correct. One okay. of the, I mean, it's, kind of, it's kind of a combination of both. Like if you know like, hey, I gotta go be a business owner, like I better have a little bit more dominance in my personality when I'm playing that role sort of thing. Yeah. You're, it's, it's identity versus role, right? So like, the role that you play in your life is not gonna be the same identity that you have, right? Think superhero for a second, right? So so you got the Hulk, um, Bruce Banner is the introverted scientist, but then he turns into Hulk and he's just a badass dominant, beat up everybody, green monster, right? So. Gotcha, cool. Is that what you think of when you get in that mode? <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> so. We, now we know his secrets. Um, yeah, that's it. it Pretending you're the Hulk. Um, Carrie, so this is kind of like different conversation. I like this, what we got into though, the psychology of sales, because I think that's super important because you're always like, uh, like one of my favorite books is Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone. I thought it was gonna be just straight like car salesman type things, but it was literally just life, like relationships and everything, selling yourself to yourself. Like it can get well, pretty meta. I mean, and I'm so glad that you said that because like everything has to do with sales. Think about in a relationship. Let's take Marie Larson. She just got married, right? Like somebody sold somebody that program. How'd she get married to that guy? What did he do to, to you know, spice her flavor? And what did she do to spice his flavor? Like, congratulations, Marie. That's awesome. It's just a great example. A marriage is a sales um, opportunity. Um, going to the movies with your spouse is another one, right? You're not going to come home and say, um, you know, like, I want to go see a ninja movie where she wants to go see like the soft and cry movie. Like there is a sale that's going to go on there. One of those people is going to win that argument, right? Or yeah, not? The ninja, the, ninja should always, the ninja should always win. Um, <laughs> um, Peter says the disc assessment is probably the best thing I've done to increase my self awareness. I also combine it with the personality type. Cool. Um, can I just touch on that? Because I think yeah. that's key, right. Like there's really three things that you got to remember if you're going to use disc. Um, personality in your business. Number one is you got it, right? So number one, be aware of yourself, hyper aware of how you act, where you act, what you're saying, the words you're using. And uh, there's a second layer, it's called visual, or sorry, it's called um, uh, primary sensory dominance, which is visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So like that's layered right underneath um, disc profiling. But anyway, that's kind of like next level stuff. Um, just be aware of who you are, what you're doing and how you're saying it, what personality you have. 
And then now you got to identify like your next step in that process to use disc in selling or in your life, be able to quickly identify other people um, in what flavor they have. And then the third step, the final step is morphing yourself into that personality. Yeah. I like that. Is there any more like resources online to go deeper in that? Just because I do know Tony Robbins is kind of like, yeah, great. Um, there's actually, give me just a second and I'll pull it up. There's an amazing book. Um, I just got to find it. Once. I feel like this should be a lead magnet for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, keep talking. What's your next question? No. Um, it, it, we have a, a user question here. Cool. Um, where is it? it just says suggestions for membership sites. Don't know what that carry. Um, don't know what you mean by that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Closer to, uh, I don't know where it's, um, where it's at, but it was written by a, it'll come to me in a second, dude. I will get it to you. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a oh, great. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Um, but I am curious. Yeah. When you do remember. Yeah. Cause, get, uh, cause I know Tony Robbins is pretty brief. Yeah, I have like a full book that's actually designed for if you read this one book, you'll be like a master at it at the end. Yeah. So, oh shoot. Yeah. Peter Zion says emotional intelligence 2.0 helped me out. I haven't oh, there you go. Yep, yep. Um, um for membership sites, I mean like uh I, I don't quite understand the question. Like, can we be a little more like what does that actually mean? Yeah. We'll we'll leave it out there if you're still on carry, can clarify because that's kind of broad. Um cool, man. So what has been like the can you actually we didn't go too deep like can we can we kind of refresh like what are all the online businesses high level that you've done like yeah, yeah. So, so when we first started um we just started with an affiliate marketing play right um okay. we found a we found a, a software platform um that would actually kind of let me just turn my boxer off there um that would uh basically it taught us facebook ads so when we went into the online world the first thing we learned was not organic social strategies or anything like that it was Here's how you do paid advertising. Here's how you master paid advertising, specifically on Facebook. I believe if you win on Facebook, Facebook advertising, it applies to almost every other platform paid advertising wise. And then we kind of did it backwards. So that was the first thing that we learned. And then since we had the sales background, like that allowed our business to grow at the rate that it did. Right. And then um, when, okay, so from there, we didn't do much other than we met Russell Brunson and fell in love with the guy because how can you not? Like he is an internet God. I believe if there was one, he would be one. Right. Um, along with Steve Larson is another internet guard, God for, for sure. Um, and you know, there's several, a couple other people, of course. Um, but yeah, so, so like, uh, just affiliate marketing, uh, with a program. And then we created a digital genius lab. Like those are the two main online things that we've ever done. Right. And then before that, there was one called AWOL, which is still around. Um, it teaches it's a competitor to click funnels. Um, and it, it actually teaches you to buy each of the softwares, link them together. And it's really good information, but it's just for the average person. It's, it's a little bit intense, right? Yeah. What is digital genius lab? So digital genius lab is our software as a service. It's a tool. It's designed to bring somebody into the internet marketing space when they've never been online or they've failed before. Um, and it gives everybody, all any, any digital geniuses that come into the lab, they get all of the tools necessary in order for them to master the front end marketing, right? So you learn that skill, social media paid advertising is what it's focused on. It gives you all the resources. We have live on Monday for um, Cranium Corner for mindset training. Wednesdays after this, we actually have our Wednesday night web show. It's called Train or Die. Um, and then Fridays we do um, Friday weekly updates for everybody. So like lots of live training on that. Um, but what it does is it gives you the, all the training you need, number one. Um, it'll give you all of the coaching because a lot of online programs don't give you coaching. So what we did is we set up one to two head coaches and a supporting coaching staff for all of our geniuses of 10 people that are there 100% of the time answering any of your questions you may have. And then lastly, it takes all those softwares, as, as anyone knows, getting online sometimes without click funnels, pre, pre click funnels is like, you kind of have to link up all the softwares, make them work, optimize it, and then you can scale. Well, we already have like put together sales funnels where people can just plug in and go. Um, and that part's all optimized and running. So we have a team that's managing that. And, and then uh, once somebody gets started in uh, to learn how to build their own business, if they have a product, they can use our training. If they don't, then they can plug into our high ticket affiliate offer that we have on the back end of our system. That's awesome. Yeah. Where can people find that? 
they want to learn more? Uh, just digitalgeniuslab.com. But I think the best place is just to hit us up on Instagram. Just original yeah. power couple. Yeah. So. Original power couple. Awesome. Yeah. On Instagram or Facebook. You can, yeah. if, if your DMs are open. Yeah, we Sean and Melissa Malone on Facebook. That's our page. You can go find that and just hit us up. Yeah. Cool. So I have some more questions. I'm not done yet. Uh, <laughs> I was just super curious about that. Um, there, I have some rapid fire questions. If you, if that's cool with you, short and sweet Love and, it. Uh, to the point. So, uh, number one, who was your biggest mentor and what's the number one thing he taught you? Okay. What age, what stage of my life? Just your life, dude. Like who's been your number one um, I'd say my dad's been one of the biggest influences I've ever had in my life. Um, I think he's done a lot of things, uh, like his personality when I was a little kid, um, was a very high D and I didn't understand personality back then. So I like, I was always looking for his love and approval and I never got it. Or at least I thought I never got it until I understood personalities. And I was like, Oh, he's been giving it to me the whole time. I'm an idiot. Right? Like, that's what I thought. Um, so there was him. Um, I've had uh, a really amazing sales coach and mentor. His name was uh, Steve Brooks. Um, he really walked me through a lot of the sales methodology, the disqualification methodology. Um, there was him. Uh, then, of course, my old business partner. Geez, I'm answering so many questions. Like, if there was just one, I can't really just say just one, dude. Like, because it's like how I find mentors. Like, that's the thing. Like, whatever problem that I got to go solve in my life, big, big picture. I find the one person who's the very best at it and then I go study them like a hawk. In, yeah. in the online space, if I'm gonna build funnels, I only go to Russell Brunson, I only listen to him. If I wanna do offer creation, I only go to Steve Larson, I, that's it, right? So that's, I mean, so it's like, that's I guess smart. it's compartmentalized. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, I was gonna ask too actually, um, so your show, Train or Die, mm -hmm. that is only for pains people? Uh, no, actually it's not, which is really cool. Uh, so we actually broadcast it live on our, our private Facebook group um, which is uh, a free group. And then we also have, we broadcast it live on our YouTube channel and our Twitch channel um, every Wednesday night. And then our members have the ability to participate in that, um, which is which is pretty cool. You can just go to our YouTube channels, just youtube.com forward slash digital genius lab. And you'll see it's called the Trainer Die Show. We go live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, and that what that show is really, it's an interesting spin on a web show. Um, we have uh, several of our super producers from our affiliate, like our software come in, like two to maybe four of them, and they compete for a digital golden belt each week. So like they have between five and 15 minutes to share the most value for our audience. And then at the end, the audience votes for the number one person they felt got the most value. And then that person wins the digital golden belt. And then they can come back the next week to defend their title. That's big, dude. What's the longest uh, streak you've you've gotten so, so far? Um, for the longest streak, we had one girl. She went only three weeks in a row, um, but she also had one. She won like not consecutive weeks, but she actually ended up winning 11, uh, 11 weeks out of an entire year. This um, girl, uh, <laughs> yeah. So she, yeah, her name is Tarna. So okay, uh, killer. That's, that's interesting. What was she teaching? Just curious. Uh, which, and that's the that's the beauty of it. Like we'll have a topic. We'll like um um so like tonight we're doing um it's the battle of the mentalists. So we have mindset people tonight. And we'll have like three mindset people come on and blow us away with their best piece of mindset advice, and then the audience votes. Like, oh, I like that one the best. Like current students are the people who talk or Current students, typically. Um so a lot of times we have guest speakers. Uh, Daxi, you actually I mean, like we've had uh, John Parks, uh Natalie Hodson. Um, geez, I don't know, Peng June's been on, um, Marley Baird, like a lot of the inner circle from ClickFunnels have all been on our show. Um, just some really, really big names. We, we're actually having travel influencers come in uh, starting this month. So we got Oksana and Max have got this uh, blog with like 3 million followers. It's a drink tea and travel blog. They're gonna come talk about how blogging is the, the, the tool they used. And so super cool, like that. that's a pretty cool thing. Like I'm super excited about that, so. Um, that's cute. Yeah, and then like you, you, you know, you're gonna be on our show. Super excited about that too. Thank you yeah. for that. I would love to to battle someone and find yeah, okay. <laughs> whoever you got, man. Let me go. I want that belt. Uh, it? <laughs> it sounds like, dude, I've never heard of that idea before. That's a genius. Um, yeah, because I never heard anyone have that like in a course or product. Really, um, I do have a buddy who has like he collaborate, like he pays people for like an hour of their time, and then they do like a training, um, and then he like sticks that in a vault. But um, that's awesome. Uh, cool. So we've got some more questions here. Sure. Um, what's your number one book of all time? Oh, this one right here. Oh, you got it handy. Bang. There's the Mr. X book. 
And besides that, I would say Expert Secrets by Russell Bunch. And these two, 100%, if you master these two books, you're, you're a G. <laughs> I haven't heard of, yeah, definitely Expert Secrets. Like, that's going to be a classic 10 years from now. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, because a lot of it is just foundation. Mr. X, I have never, I don't even see that when I Google it. They don't even that? publish it, dude. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that the, the last the last book I that one sold um for I think five hundred ninety five dollars on Amazon the last time I saw. I think it. we were just talking about that with someone actually recently. Yeah. yeah. So and breakthrough that. before they put breakthrough advertising with Eugene Schwartz. Like I, I love copy. I'm a copy nut. So um in the space, I think that's a good good thing. Yeah. So okay. like, breakthrough what, advertising what specifically from that book that you have, Mr. X. Mr. X, what do I love about it the most? Um, well, it goes, I mean, it's so deep, right? Like it'll walk through everything. Um, if I were to just get to the, um, it's, it's just a book about how to profit with, with uh, copy and, and words. And um, so, I don't know, I think like choosing your clients is in here. Uh, there's a lot of education about like how to, how to outmarket your competitors is probably one of my biggest takeaways out of this book for sure. Yeah. Nice. Cool. That's awesome. Um, the people who, who work with you and know you and collab with you, what do they say is most unique about you? Most unique about me? Probably oh, my crazy yeah. amount of energy that I have all the time. Like I just bounce around all the time. Yeah. So You're not even on a trampoline? Just yeah, no, no, dude, I'm on, on the floor. But I, it's, um, it's really interesting. Like I, I started going down this path of, of biohacking and the one thing that I found, and I'm not, I mean, obviously I, I follow a lot of biohackers, but um, um, Anthony D. Clemente, one of them, uh, Dave Asprey, another one of them, probably the two that I look at the most. And they said, if you can bounce your mitochondria every day for like two minutes, like it'll change your whole energy. And I started doing that in my morning routine. And dude, I tell you what, like I can turn on energy like that, you know, which is cool. Like on a trampoline or just on the ground? Or um, I actually do, do old school, like punching, like jump rope, bro. <laughs> that's if, awesome. if you have a rebounder rebounders are really good less stressful in the joints yeah nice um and uh I, this is always a fun one uh what are you currently obsessed with i am currently obsessed with um building out uh, my new project i'm working on a secret project that not really many you're talking about, about it. <laughs> uh, yeah so so I, that's one thing i'm super obsessed about um the other thing that i'm really obsessed about right now is what i call project dtm stands for delete the muffin top if you know what i'm talking about so <laughs> my muffin no. top, my gut my little gut at the, on my oh stomach. okay right so like as i get older who's the weight and so biohack to do this like putting a tree a day every single you know, to make it happen <laughs> cool my stream's lagging a little bit i think we're fine right now though cool i don't know i don't know okay cool um yeah it's interesting i started biohacking before i got into entrepreneurship like way back uh that's how you I became a vegan yeah vegetarian actually oh, cool. vegetarian. yeah i like i like eggs and <laughs> it would be hard for me to get enough protein without eggs i tell you um, what i love cheese man i can't eat vegan cheese like like it just doesn't work for me bro yeah, it does not work. Cool, man, dude. So I really appreciate you uh, taking the time here and uh, hopping on. We got some good engagement here, and um, I, I like the little, the deep. We got into personality sales real, real quick. I thought that was really good. Um, excited for more people to hear this. Um, for people to follow you, Instagram, correct? The original. Yeah, just power go to Instagram, original power couple. Look for our giant kitty cats. We have two kitty cats. One of them is named Darwin. The other is Tesla. Um, Darwin is about a 28 pound Maine Coon. Um, we walk him along on a leash. He plays fetch. Like he catches his little cookies in his mouth. Like he's like a dog, but he's a cat. Like super cool. And um, <laughs> Taxi's like, what? <laughs> I gotta see this Instagram, dude. I don't yeah, know right. I'm yeah. You'll see hey, it. wait, but is it like Tesla? from like because of Elon or because the original yeah. Tesla? We needed to, originally it was gonna be Tupac and Biggie, um, but then we were like, no, we don't wanna do the rapper name. So we ended up choosing Tesla for Nikola Tesla and then Darwin um, because they're two really fantastic thinkers in our time. Yeah, yeah Nikola Tesla, like he's still one of the, like, his documentary is like literally one of my favorite like autobiographies. Like the amount of stuff this guy, yeah. Uh, cool. Awesome, man. Um, thanks again, dude. I'm going to end the live stream. If you guys are in the replay, give me hashtag replay, go follow Sean. And Daxi, we'll thank you so much guys. And if you're not using Daxi, you need to be like right now, you know what I'm yeah. saying? 
Yeah, so you gotta be specific in how how you use me, but uh <laughs> cool. I'm gonna end the broadcast. <laughs>